you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, they will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This verse begins with a cry of anguish and abandonment, expressing the psalmist's feeling of being deserted by God in a time of trouble. It's a lamentation that echoes the sentiments of abandonment experienced by Jesus on the cross in Matthew 27, verse 46. This was the startling cry of Golgotha, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. 
The Jews mocked, but the angels adored when Jesus cried this exceeding bitter cry. Nailed to the tree we behold our great Redeemer in extremities, and what see we? Having ears to hear, let us hear, and having eyes to see, let us see. Let us gaze with holy wonder and mark the flashes of light amid the awful darkness of that midday midnight. The psalmist continues to express the intensity of their distress, feeling as though their prayers go unanswered and finding no relief even in the solitude of the night. In the next verse, yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. Despite feeling abandoned, the psalmist acknowledges God's sovereignty and holiness, affirming that God is still worthy of praise. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. The psalmist recalls the faithfulness of God in past generations, noting that their ancestors trusted in God and were delivered from their troubles. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. This verse reinforces the idea that God has a history of hearing the cries of the faithful and coming to their rescue, ensuring that their trust in him was not in vain. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. The psalmist describes their current state of humiliation and rejection, feeling insignificant and unworthy of respect. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. The psalmist describes the ridicule and scorn they endure from others, painting a picture of public humiliation and ridicule. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. This verse reflects the taunts of the psalmist's enemies who mock their trust in God and challenge God to intervene if he truly cares for them. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. Despite the current circumstances, the psalmist acknowledges God's role in their life from birth, highlighting God's faithfulness and the deep-rooted trust that has been instilled in them from infancy. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. This verse emphasizes the lifelong relationship between the psalmist and God, underscoring the continuity of God's presence and care throughout the psalmist's entire life. This is beyond all others, the psalm of the cross. It may have been repeated word by word by our Lord when hanging on the tree. It would be too bold to say that it was so, but even a casual reader may see that it might have been. It begins with, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And ends, according to some, in the original with, It is finished. For plaintive expressions uprising from unutterable depths of woe, we may say of this psalm, There is none like it. It is the photograph of our Lord's saddest hours. David and his afflictions may be here in a very modified sense, but as the star is concealed by the light of the sun, he who sees Jesus will probably neither see nor care to see David. Before us, we have a description both of the darkness and of the glory of the cross, the sufferings of Christ and the glory which shall follow. Oh, for grace to draw near and see this great sight. We should read reverently, putting off our shoes from our feet, as Moses did at the burning bush. For if there be holy ground anywhere in Scripture, it is in this psalm. Be not far from me. This is the petition for which he has been using such varied and powerful pleas. His great woe was that God had forsaken him. His great prayer is that he would be near him, a lively sense of the divine presence is a mighty stay to the heart in times of distress. Many bulls have come past me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. The mighty ones in the crowd are here marked by the tearful eye of their victim. The priests, elders, scribes, Pharisees, rulers and captains 
bellowed round the cross like wild cattle, fed in the fat and solitary pastures of Bashan, full of strength and fury. They stamped and foamed around the innocent one, and longed to gore him to death with their cruelties. They part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. The garments of the executed were the perquisites of the executioners in most cases, but it was not often that they cast lots at the division of the spoil. This incident shows how clearly David in vision saw the day of Christ, and how surely the man of Nazareth is he of whom the prophets spake. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. He who gave his blood to cleanse us gave his garments to clothe us. Come then to Jesus at once. Do you say you do not know how to come? Come just as you are. Do not wait to do anything. What you want is to leave all doing and let Christ do all for you. What do you want to do when he has done all? All the labor of your hands can never fulfill what God commands. Christ died for sinners and you must say, sink or swim. I will have no other savior but Christ. Cast yourself wholly upon him. And when thine eye of faith is dim, still trust in Jesus, sink or swim. Still at his footstool humbly bow, O sinner, sinner, prostrate now. He can pardon you at this moment. Some of you know you are guilty and groan concerning it. Sinner, why tarriest thou? Come and welcome is my master's message to you. If you feel you are lost and ruined, there is no barrier between you and heaven. Christ has broken it down. If you know your lost estate, Christ has died for you. Believe and come.